you review how the defense played? Do you look how much do you look at the first three quarters? How much do you look at the, the final product? Well, the final product, you know, we found a way to win the game, thankfully. Um, but you know, I, I told the defense this. Um, you know, they had Monday and Tuesday off, so the you know first first time we saw them was on Wednesday. I thought for 53 minutes we played, you know, very well. Um, but the last seven minutes of the game, you know, we give up two crucial third downs, you know, have a couple penalties that, that hurt us. Um, but I thought, you know, up until then, um, you know, right about that seven minute mark when it was, you know, 30 to 16, um, I, I thought we, we flew around and played pretty well. But again, um, talked about consistency last week. Um, you know, whether you put consistency, playing four quarters, finish, all into the same bucket. Um, you know, we got we got to play a sixty-minute complete football game. Does that mean the, the changes from more blitzing to more man coverage that that you did implement? Did, did you find solutions in that to, to carry forward since it did work for fifty-three minutes? Yeah, you know, I mean, I just think bottom line, it got down to you know they made some plays and we didn't make plays the last seven minutes. What do you know about Jaron Hall? Um, you know, we we. We did list him. Uh, you know, we, we present a, a a two deep to our players every week. Um, you know, and, and we did on Wednesday. The first thing we do is we go through the two deep with the guys. You know, we listed him as the number two. So, um, and then we went back. You know, he's played. You know, I think what he played 12, 12 plays in the Atlanta game, and then ten or eleven plays against us. Um, I think he's got almost there was almost 70 throws that he had in the in the preseason. So, um, you know, you do your due diligence with a guy um, when he's when he's on the two deep um, and then obviously finding out this afternoon that he's going to be the guy. So, um, you know, rookie guy that has a, a, a small sample size of, of of a menu to go off of. But um, I got a lot of respect for Kevin and and. Uh, the people there, so they, they obviously thought highly enough of him to, to draft him in the fifth round. So, in terms of uh, defending Jefferson, you know what you guys did week one last year obviously didn't work. Then you had twenty three kind of follow him a little bit more later in the season that yeah. did work. Uh, then he doesn't play against you, so you don't have the guy that followed him this week. Yeah. What do you go off of in terms of what you guys have done against him in the past when you're preparing for Sunday? Yeah, you know I, I think it's he is a. Uh, you know, he's arguably the, the best receiver in the game, you know, so um, he demands a lot of attention. Um, you know, I think you gotta, you gotta mix up things with him. Um, you can't just give him one consistent thing, um, but he's an elite player and, uh, you know, he's, he's, like I said, he, you have to know where he is and what he's doing on every snap, you know, and that's, um, when you do that, that obviously, you know, Based on what you call, there's some things that you're going to be a little li little bit limited in other areas, um, but he's the type of player that can absolutely ruin a game. So you have to have attention on him all the time. How much does not having Jair change how you game plan against? Oh, him? you know, I mean, that's, I mean, obviously, guys. I mean, you you have Jair's a an, an elite player, you know, um, so of course that's that's gonna, but. Um, it is what it is. We've kind of had that that mantra, that mindset all year. That next man up, and uh, we got to keep it moving and, and keep preparing. And they're going to break the huddle with eleven guys. We're going to break the huddle with eleven guys, and we got to go play. You'd obviously rather have him available than not, but does it help at least to some degree that you basically played the vast majority of the season without him, so you know how to sure. what the other guys can do? And yeah, you know, I, I think that's that that's fair. Um, you know, the other thing, hopefully, a guy like Eric Stokes, um, who hadn't played football in 13 months, you know, is going into his third game now, you know, so hopefully he'll be another week better. Um, but, yeah, at, at least, you know, Carrington and Corey and a number of guys um, all year long, it's kind of been that shuffle. Um, but they have a lot of valuable reps under their belt. About um, using Stokes on either side, or you know, is he more of a left side guy for you, and then you'll fill in on the other side? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's always a, uh, I think that's a specific question for, 
um, the player. But you know, in in having convers, I always I always ask pass rushers and corners because some guys do you know feel much more comfortable playing on the right or playing on the left. Um, very similar to pass rushers. Some guys are just more natural on the left or the right. Um, I think Eric's a guy. Um, Eric really isn't isn't bothered by a lot of things and kind of doesn't overanalyze things. So I think Eric absolutely is is comfortable playing on the right or the left. But um, at least that's what he's communicated to me in my relationship with him. So I don't I don't think he he strongly feels he's better on one side or the other. Going back to the quarterback, what's the challenge of keeping the rushing game of his under wraps? Yeah, you know, I think in today's football, I think that's something, Bill, that, you know, you have to be conscious of. That's kind of that's kind of standard in today's football. Um, now, there's some guys that you just simply don't worry about them running. Um, but, you know, these, these young athletic quarterbacks that are, you know, kind of coming into our league now, that's something you got to be worried about all the time. And, um, you know, this kid definitely falls into that, that category, that um, – you do have to be conscious of it. And, you know, when you do have a quarterback that can run, I'm talking about both when it's a designed called run, but then also when things break down and you have, you know, the perfect coverage, for example, but then a guy can take off and create and, and run and make plays on his own. You know, that, that's, that's, that's a weapon that offenses have and um, definitely something we have to be conscious of with this guy. So this is teetering on a game plan question, so if you want to answer it, I totally get it, but do you have to play more zone against a guy like that? If you're playing man in your corners, backs are turned, and you just might not see him? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that definitely, when you're playing against a guy that is a really good runner, it's always better to have what we refer to as zone eyes across the board instead of just man eyes. Um, you know, so you do have, especially when a guy breaks the pocket, you can see that when you're because in zone coverage you see the quarterback you're reading the quarterback you're breaking on the quarterback so in court a case um, he does take off you have that but you know I still think you gotta you gotta be able to always mix coverage principles and, and play multiple different things. Joe, this I, I don't want to be overly simplistic, right? Because it's, it's a lot more complicated than this. But you know, Baker has a really good game against you guys. DeVito obviously had his moments, and then obviously Young, you know, at least in the fourth quarter, played pretty well against you yeah. guys. Is it important? I'm not trying to diss Jaron Hall by any stretch, but he is a rookie fifth-round pick. Is it important for you guys to kind of set the tone early and, and really kind of make sure that a, another quarterback doesn't kind of get momentum sure. rolling against you guys as a group? Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I, I would, you know, I hope you guys understand that's kind of our – that, that's our mindset and that's our want every week, no matter, you know, if we're playing against, you know, Patrick Mahomes or Jared Goff. You know, really you, you want to have that type of mindset and that type of attitude every week. But um, I think it's always very, very important to start fast. There's no doubt about it. Set the tone early, no doubt about it. Um, which, again, back to what I said earlier, I, I thought we did that for the most part um, in this past game. But – that's the thing in the National Football League. You got to play. You got to play for sixty minutes, and um, you can't play for fifty or fifty-three. You got to play in a complete game, um, and when you get into the fourth quarter, you got to slam the door and, and close the door. So, um, yeah, that that's our mindset every week is that we always want to start fast, but we want to finish strong as well. About a month ago, Devondre Campbell made it clear how much he likes playing with Quay Walker. And I think I get the same from Quay. And you even say how much you need Dre as a veteran outside of Preston. How much does this defense miss those two guys being on the field for more snaps? You know, um, a lot. I mean, first and foremost. Um, I, I, I do want to, I'll answer that specifically, but I do want to give praise to, you know, Isaiah McDuffie's done a done a great job when either one of those guys have been out. Um, Eric Wilson even at times has gone in and done a, a great job for us. But yeah, when you're talking about you know Dre and Quay, um, I think that falls into you can make the same thing you know with our secondary. You know, it's I talk about consistency a lot, and 
guys being able to play together and gel and come together week in and week out, day in and day out, um, that consistency is built. And, you know, especially from an inside linebacker position, you know, specifically what you're saying, there's, there's, a, there's a comfort and there's a consistency that takes place when the guy to your right is all the same and the guy to your left is always the same. And um, that's created through time with just building reps. And, um, you know, Dre relays on, relies on Quay for certain things and vice versa. You know, Quay relies on Dre. And um, it's, it's, it breaks my heart for him because I know how bad he wants to be out there. And I know how bad he wants to play. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully he'll continue to heal and, and get better and we, we can get that. But, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's been a big thing, I think, for, for both guys, um, not having that, that consistent partner next to you consistently. When it comes to starting fast, there's some weeks you do it well, and other weeks you don't. What ultimately falls to the difference in the two weeks? Is that an execution thing, going out and making plays? Is that the play calling on your part? Well, what's the difference in those two weeks? Yeah, I, I think yes, yes, and yes. I, I think it's a combination of all those things. Um, you know, you wish, I know as a coach, when things like that happen, you wish you could, you know, put your thumb on it and say, God dang it, this is why, let's fix it. Um, but that's, the, you know, that's the constant challenge when it doesn't go your way. Um, but I think it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of all those things that you listed. So there's no, like, magic button, like, you can't just be like, okay, we're just going to blitz more. If, if you have happen. that magic button, I'd, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you for it. I'll, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you good money for it. I just ask questions. Yeah. That's all I'm good for. Yeah, I, I would love I would love to find that magic button. You mentioned you mentioned Stokes earlier. How do you yeah. think he's done? Obviously, um, it's easy for us to see him give up touchdowns. It's also easy to understand that he had training camp, so he's kind of yeah. kind of in training camp mode, so to speak. While we got his earned yeah. season mode. And I'm going to answer that, Bill. I, and I I don't want it to be an excuse at all. But I'm I'm a firm believer in in progression, and I think even a player. Um, even in today's day and age where off-season aren't, aren't necessarily as grueling as they used to be, but, you know, you have a nine-week off-season to kind of get your body back into it. Then you have a, you know, three- or four-week training camp to get your body into it. Uh, you have, you know, preseason games. You practice against other teams to get your, your body hardened and callous to play this game. Um, you know, you got to remember, Eric Stokes – had, didn't play football for 13 months, you know, and he's just played the last two weeks. So um, I, th I think there's some things that we're going to have to just – I'm just glad. It's so great to have him back out there, his energy and what he brings to us. But, um, you know, there's some he's, – he's working through some things right now because he's missed a lot of time. Last one, please. Joy, um, after a game – I was talking to Anthony Johnson, and he wasn't thrilled with his play. He thought he made some mistakes. But yeah. you used him in a lot of different ways, slot, you know, up, back, whatever. Yeah. What, what do you think you have in him? And, you know, how yeah. much confidence do you have in him at this point? Good young player, you know. And I think um, kind of what I was alluding to before, I think um, because of injuries and whatever, um, he's been able to log some some – valuable time as a as a seventh round rookie safety this year you know and you also got to remember too with with Anthony if you look into his background you know he was a, he was a college corner um, so he's relatively new to the safety position he's still learning the position you know as a as a rookie so um, but you know like I tell you every week you know as long as guys are, are kind of stacking blocks and I, I, th I think Anthony is you know Comparing him to where he was, you know, six short months ago at the rookie minicamp, um, I, th I think he's doing good things. Thank you guys. I, I know Jason will call last call, but I'm going to defy him. Um, I understand this. You're going to do that? He's going to let you this. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, for you, you always. We, you I, can ask two more questions if you want. No, know. I won't only ask one. But, but I, I understand it's a results-based business, right? And this oh, is absolutely. Awesome. But... But it has you, you kind of admitted last week it's been a tough go lately. What would it mean to you for you you gotta win, you wanna win and yeah. all that stuff. But what would it mean to you to win 
and have your guys play really well for you the last couple of weeks here and, and maybe get into the postseason. When you've gone through the, the last several weeks after defense had played pretty well for a good chunk of the year, yeah. what would it mean to you for you guys to play well on your side of the ball? Well, I mean, not only for me. Um, I mean, that, that's, you guys got to understand, that's, that's my goal every week, you know. Um, this is, we, we have a ton of people working their butt off, uh, both in that coaching hallway and in our locker room. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I just want to win for the Green Bay Packers, you know. I don't, I don't care about individual, anything like that. Um, but that's, that, that's my mindset and that's my want every week. So, um, Guys work their butt off. They prepare, um, go out and practice every week, every day, every week, um, with the mindset to go win a football game. So um, that's our goal every single week, and that would that would make me happy if that happened.